Hi everyone, welcome back to Think Science. Today, we will be discussing the process of glycolysis. Before we get started, we wanted to start off with the question of the day. Who first discovered glycolysis? Leave your answer in the comments. First, let's begin with an overview. Glycolysis is the first step of cellular respiration. Cellular respiration is really important because it's the process by which the cell takes glucose and converts it into ATP, giving the cell the energy it needs to perform essential life functions. So you may be wondering, how does the cell get glucose? In our previous videos on photosynthesis, we talked about how the plants use the process of photosynthesis to convert light energy into glucose. We humans then eat these plants, or we eat the animals that eat these plants, and after we eat these plants or animals, we obtain the glucose that was previously in the plant. Once our cells have the glucose, the process of cellular respiration starts, with glycolysis as the first step. Glycolysis has two parts, the investment phase where two ATPs are used and the payoff phase where four ATPs are produced. In the end, glycolysis produces a net of two ATPs and a pyruvate that can be used in further reactions to produce even more ATP. Glycolysis occurs in the cytosol. The glucose molecule is transformed into glucose 6-phosphate through the addition of a phosphate group to the glucose molecule. This process of adding a phosphate group is called phosphorylation. This reaction occurs with the help of the enzyme hexokinase. Because this reaction is adding a phosphate group, it uses energy, resulting in the loss of one ATP molecule. Once this happens, there is going to be another reaction where glucose 6-phosphate turns into fructose 6-phosphate. This reaction occurs with the help of the enzyme isomerase. Then, the fructose 6-phosphate is going to have a phosphate group added to it, making fructose 1,6-biphosphate. You can see here the hydrogen was replaced with the phosphate group. This time, the reaction is going to occur with the help of the enzyme phosphofructokinase, and this reaction is going to use up another ATP molecule because it is adding a phosphate group. Then, this is going to split up and we will get two molecules, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate molecule and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. These two molecules are actually isomers and can therefore be converted into each other using the enzyme isomerase. However, because glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate is used in further reactions, usually dihydroxyacetone phosphate is converted into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate instead of the other way around. This concludes the first phase of glycolysis. By the end of this phase, we have produced two glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate molecules and we have lost two ATPs. In the next phase, we will use the two molecules to produce four ATPs. Now that we have our glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, we can continue to the next phase. It is important to remember that because we have two of these molecules, all of the following reactions will happen two times, one time for each molecule. The glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is converted into 1,3-bisophosphoglycerate through the addition of a phosphate group using the enzyme glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate dehydrogenase. NAD plus is also converted into NADH. This NADH is used in the electron transport chain later on to produce even more ATP. This will be discussed in future videos. The 1,3-bisophosphoglycerate then transfers one of its phosphate groups to ADP, making ATP. Remember that because this reaction is happening twice, two ATPs are produced. The loss of this phosphate group transforms the 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate into 3-phosphoglycerate. This reaction uses the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase. The 3-phosphoglycerate is then rearranged to form its isomer 2-phosphoglycerate using the enzyme phosphoglycerate mutase. The two phosphoglycerate molecules then lose a water molecule and becomes phosphoenol pyruvate. Because phosphoenol pyruvate is unstable, it readily donates its phosphate group to ADP, which produces ATP. 
Again, this reaction will be happening two times, so two ATPs are produced. The loss of a phosphate group for phospholinyl pyruvate results in a pyruvate molecule. This is the last step of glycolysis, which results in two pyruvate molecules. These two pyruvate molecules, in addition to the two NADH molecules that were produced, are going to be used in future reactions that will result in even more energy being produced. We will be uploading videos detailing these future reactions next week. Thank you for watching Think Science. To support our channel, make sure to click the red subscribe button below this video to subscribe to our channel for more easy to understand science videos. If this video made sense, leave a comment to let us know. Be sure to also leave any questions and we will do our best to answer.